Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, so a little something different today. Uh, we're going to look at an example of a simple interactive application made in Touch Designer. Um, and we're going to focus on two different DATs, the multi-touch in DAT and the render pick DAT. Uh, and with that, we're going to be able to do things like have uh, some elements following the mouse cursor properly like this, uh, detect mouse clicks, uh, and then more importantly, be able to hover over certain elements, such as these, uh, these red circles here, uh, and be able to detect when, when the mouse is going over them and clicking on them, and then uh, trigger different uh, behaviors based on that. So this, uh, this little game, uh, is inspired by uh, my son is obsessed with watching videos of uh, like timers of, of bomb fuses of cartoon bombs right now. Uh, so this is a kind of game where you have to pick um, which fuse to light and then hopefully you hit the star and not the bomb. Um, and we can set up you know a little system like this and we pick one. So maybe let's just run through this a couple times and see how it works. So let's choose this one maybe. So we can hit N, get a new one, and I don't know, let's just try this one this time. job so let's have a look uh, let's go ahead and just turn the audio off on that um, so let's have a look at um, these two operators and how they are working to make that happen uh, all the other guts of these systems I won't really dive into uh, essentially I've got uh, two different containers um, noise chop generating the fuse for each and then using a trim uh, chop to uh, along with a timer chop uh, to trim the start of that fuse and kind of make it uh, burn away and then getting the, the points for that. Uh, and when it's done, then trigger uh, different particle effects or, or sound effects based on that. Uh, but let's look at these dots. Let's look at a simple render pick setup here uh, in this container. Uh, and let's, let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, and let's see what the, the basic thing that we need is just simple, uh, some simple SOPs. Um, you know, this is just whatever. I've got like three different geos here uh, and some noise to make some random um, translates and rotation. Nothing too difficult. We can see what we end up with there. So for the render pick situation to work, we need um, SOP geometry that's being rendered for number one. Um, that needs to be uh, being displayed in a container. Um, so usually we, we would have all this all this stuff kind of inside the container here. Uh, and then you know, we normally would see something like dot slash out one, right? And so the, the container would be displaying what's inside of it. This is you know the same thing except that all this is just on the same level. Uh, just to be able to show everything all, all together like that. Um, but all that's important is we need this container here. Um, and then let's get multi-touch in. And so this is uh, really useful for multi, like touch screen tablets is what it's, it's really used for. Um, but it can also be used for uh, just this desktop uh, mouse situation. Uh, to do so, we need to make sure this include mouse is uh, turned on. Uh, but maybe to start, let's say we need to say panel. So let's drag 
container one here, great. And uh, the other things by default is fine. And I'll do this. So right now, nothing's gonna work. I'm clicking, nothing's happening. Include mouse on. And now we see we see some data here. And actually let me drag this out a little bit because there's like like a whole lot of columns of data that we can see here. Okay, so I got XY, I've got UV, I've got, if I click on uh, this little select, goes from zero to one. This SN column here is, uh, is a kind of number of different uh, clicks that I've had. Uh, if I was actually using a multi-touch tablet, uh, as I put more, more fingers on the tablet, I would get multiple IDs here. So touch one, two, three, four, or five. Um, and so what we care about also, so click time could be useful. Um, so if it's, uh, if you wanna judge, you know, what time you're clicking, the elapsed time. So if you click and hold for one second, let's say something happens. Uh, also we've got, uh, if you go all the way over here, double click, right? Double click that goes to one. Uh, so lots of cool um, input data here. We can change the double click time right here. So that is finding out uh, our, um, our touch and click information. Uh, and what we then do is drag that into render pick. Okay, great. And so what render pick needs is the name of a render or render pass top, which is this right here. Let's drag that in. And once we do that, okay, so it's clicking nothing. So it's just zero. Ooh, look at that. So that's, that's showing us. Let's do the same thing here so we can see all the information that it's giving us here. Okay, so for right now, it's only responding on clicks. And we can see it says sphere, Taurus, box is hiding down there, but I'm getting back either clicking nothing, clicking on the Taurus, clicking the sphere, clicking the box, uh, and that is pretty awesome. Um, so by the way, in these different geos, this, this is just an out SOP, but I took the liberty of um, renaming this, so that kind of helps uh, over here in my render pick that so I can kind of read this last part here box torus or sphere uh, and that is it so by default it's not going to give you a hover um, behavior uh, but if you go into render pick strategy while select let's change that to always and then just by rolling over it um, that gives me those things and uh, so in this case, selected is negative one because I, I'm not clicking anything. And you see selected path also, I'm not clicking anything, so nothing is there. So hovering over the sphere, when I click on the sphere, the selected path gives me the name of that path. Cool, okay. So that is, uh, that's the super simple version of render pick. Uh, and so we can see, so what I'm doing here uh, so essentially, I want to start like burning the fuse um, on uh, one of these, depending on which one I'm hovering over, right? Uh, and so I've got two different render picks, and that's just going into a dat execute right here. And this is saying, if the path here is this, then I'm just changing this constant value from uh, one or zero. So this dot execute down here, it's doing the same thing, testing for uh, the, the star. Uh, and that's, we can kind of see here. Let me, you know what, let me do a little view, pop that open. Okay, and so here we can see, all right, I'm getting just this, rename these to hover bomb, hover star. So that is showing me, that's giving me a trigger for hover. And if you can kind of see also that's, uh, the little red uh, dotted circles start this kind of uh, breathing type of thing. So this constant right here also is, is being sent to an LFO that's turning on and off, which is um, changing the scale of these. So, okay. Uh, also in my multi-touch, I have this select. So as I click, select goes from zero to one, we can see. And we see that down here. And I'm renaming that to be click. So I want to test whether, okay, I'm clicking right now, but nothing happens. Like 
when do I want something to happen? Like if I'm hovering over the circle and I click down, I, I want that to be triggered. So I've got this logic here. It's a logic uh, and. So it's combining my hover uh, chop and my click chop. So if both of those are one, then I know that I am hovering over the circle and I'm clicking. Uh, but then also I want it to not um, kind of trigger the start for that timer chop uh, to start like burning the fuse uh, um, ostensibly. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm delaying this by two seconds and I've got another logic here. So and so you can kind of see. So as I click this one down here is going to be turned on and then it's going to wait two seconds and then that's going to turn on. But both of them have to be on at the same time right here in order to pass on to my final null, um, which I, I call this click bomb circle or click star circle. Uh, and that is what is doing in the shop execute. It's going inside. It's starting the timer uh, for either the bomb or for the star. Uh, so just by doing that little trick, it makes me, so let's do the star here. Was this the star? So I have to click, hold it for, see it's that one. There we go. Hold it for two seconds. Boom. So when both of them are one, that finally triggers the start. And then we do the thing. Um, but that's, you know, that's just kind of using the, the basic data from multi-touch in, render pick, doing a little bit of parsing uh, in, in chops, a little bit of logic uh, in order to, make a slightly more complicated behavior. Um, and then maybe just to really to show this specifically, uh, inside this, I've got these little start buttons. And if I go into, let's say, so here's the magic of what's happening right now. Let me go ahead and hit in. Uh, here's my timer. And we can see right here on my start, that is looking for that star start button for when it is clicked, uh, which is happening because of my trap execute that over there. Uh, and according to this timer fraction, it is changing the start uh, percentage of my, um, of, of this noise. So that is how it's happening. It's like super easy, uh, super useful way to create interactive applications uh, and have fun with it. Okay.